Kevin, Kevin O'Connor is in the house. Kevin, Honey. how are you? <laughs> Good. Great. So happy to have you on here. Thank so you since 2003, you've been educating people how to make their homes better. This old house, ask this old house. You've been on the History Channel, the DIY Network. You've even brought us a book. <laughs> Amazing houses from this old house. I know that's not the name. You're going to have to give us the name. It is only natural that the National Hardware Show has you as our spokesperson, right? Uh, if you think of old houses or houses in general, hopefully you think of this old house. So yeah, I think it is fitting. Uh, and we've been at it for a long time. Even though I've been doing it for 20, the show's been on for 42, 43 years. So it's kind of iconic in the space. It's so amazing too, you know, with all of the, and of course, influencers are important, social media is important, but really having like a legacy brand, like this old house that's been around where, you know, you can trust the advice, you know, it's legitimate. Um, it's just so nice. And it's so nice to be talking to you. You know, we got to experience national hardware show last year together. Did you have a good time out there? I had a blast. Can we talk about the restaurant or is that like, that's all the after hour stuff? You know, the, 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 oh, the Mayfair? <laughs> amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the show was a ton of fun. Um, it was uh, it was one of the first ones back, you know, pre-COVID. So it was so nice to be in person and the big courtyard and all the folks showing up there. So that was a treat. And I, I know I loved your I loved your favorite finds too. That that is so fun. People don't talk about favorite finds as much as they should, right? Yeah, well, that's like, I'm already digging through some of the stuff for this coming up here to figure it out. There, there's a, uh, I don't know if you remember, but one of the things we found was the guy who did the um, the caulking and he had a little rubber finger. Oh yeah, the caulking finger, of yeah, course. Right. That that had a long life for the trip we were there, but those things are cool. It's just like, that's a perfect <laughs> idea. The guy came up with an artificial finger to swipe the caulk along the uh, the tile, the grout line and stuff like that. So it's, it's, I love it because it's so simple and you kind of look at these things like you had, I think you brought the root quencher on too yeah. where you dig a hole and then you water from underground and I saw that and I was like why didn't I think of that before instead of broken sprinkler heads but I, I, I stayed in touch with him we still go back and forth via email you know I'm introducing him to folks on our show uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea if you're doing sort of focused targeted watering um, I had never seen it I'm a huge grass guy and always you know fighting the water bands in town so I saw <laughs> that I'm like this is awesome so Robert and I became buddies over email after the show was over I love it. See, and that just goes to show the relationships that happen on trade show floors happen nowhere else because you just get to see it in action. Nope. So speaking of action, I'm really excited to see you out January 31st. So everybody, we were just talking about favorite finds. So we have well-known um, press, influencers, people really embedded in the industry, go around the show, find their favorite products, bring them on stage. So you'll see Kevin O'Connor up there. You'll actually see myself up there. You'll see some um, some really some great people. So make sure to look at that agenda because they really are really cool products. And I mean, hey, Kevin does all the work. We do all the work. We're running around the show looking for this stuff. So it's like our top four. But so Kevin, what do you think about, I mean, so now January 31st, National Hardware Show doors were open. So will Kitchen Abasho, KBiz. So will IBiz. I know there's also a couple other shows, but those three are the big ones yeah. under the convention center. What are your thoughts on all of those shows happening at once? That, thank you for saving me four different flights on airplanes for four different <laughs> events. So I mean, true. right? I mean, I've been to all of them over the years for many, many years, um, and I love them. So to me, scale is key, right? Scale is awesome. If you can get more, bigger, and better all in one place all at the same time, I think that's huge. The fact that they are adjacent, that you can walk from one to the other, I think is terrific. But also, you know, well, you know this, I mean, National Hardware Shows, it's not just about hardware, right? It's about anything that has to do with the house, the yard, as do those other shows. So there is so much overlap with those shows. It makes perfect sense to me because yeah. I am going to see the folks who I met at the hardware show again and new people, but there are people who I count on seeing every year at IBS or KBiz or something like that. So it's a packed week for me. Um, super efficient. Again, thank you for saving me three. I know. Years. Don't you love it? I mean, you kind of, so, so the shows did extend, right? They only used to be two days. Yeah. Now they're two and a half or let's see 31st for a second. Yeah. So two and a half, you know, that last day was always ghost town. Right. And, and yeah. vendors would be there saying like, why am I still set up? Everybody's on their flight home. 
now I feel like with the three shows, everyone is going to pack every single minute. And I do love, so, so national hardware show, you know, we're in the, we're in the South hall and the bronze lot, you know, and then you can kind of move through, I believe IBIS is in the middle and KBiz, of course, check, check your local listings. Cause I don't know if that's exact, but, but I know that we're on the far end, but I just love that you can literally, I mean, you're, yeah, I, you know, what we should do, we should put our step counter on and whoever gets the most steps oh. means a free segue for next I don't year. Wanna, I don't <laughs> want to know. I don't want to know the steps, uh, but everyone's going to get a chance to co-mingle, right? So after the <laughs> When you gather at the local place downtown in Vegas, there's a million of them, and yep. you send the text out or the social media DM, whatever, and says we're meeting here. Like that's when I'm going to commingle the most with folks who I normally would be spending the daytime with over at KBiz, yeah, uh, IBS. I just know now that I'm going to get connected with them uh, in person, which I stay connected with these people throughout the year. I know, isn't it so nice? It's so usually. nice to. There's something about a face to face, yeah. right? Interchange you know, shucking it up, telling jokes, talking business, all of that. I do love too, that the badge you can use for all three. So, you know, at the national hardware show, of course, we're always going to host the fun party in the backyard with free drinks, some food, you know, but that badge, if someone, if you have a badge, you can just come. So I like having that. You're right. I love that. Like on the floor, like meeting and greeting. And I know you'll be filming a bunch of stuff but then getting to relax and just enjoy time together. So I do, I love it. I love it. So, so going back to last year, do you, would you say you had a favorite time or was there something that really stuck out with from the show for you that really is a memory that you'll take with you and kind of look to do again this year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was two that really came to mind. One was sort of fun and engaging and one was sort of, you know, sort of emotional and impactful. And the first one was when we were up there and we were judging some of the new business ideas and we had a great little panel that was doing it. And that's where we found the actual, the, the finger, the cock finger, if you will. Uh, but the enthusiasm from the folks that have invented something, they're very early on, they're trying to get shelf space, they're trying to get feedback, and they're so eager and anxious to hear anything you've got to say. It was informative for me to see the new stuff coming to us, but it was also a ton of fun. You know, it was like a little mini shark tank. Yeah, and, it's you know, United Inventors and Association. They do that every year, right? So they have yeah. a huge, are you, hopefully you're doing this year with them as well, yes? I, I think it's on my schedule. I haven't okay. seen the final thing, but um, I'm pretty sure it's on my schedule. Yeah, so. they have their own stage. It's, I, I love it. Don't you love it? The you cannot you cannot bridle or capture the enthusiasm of inventors. When an inventor is showing their product, yeah. isn't it just, it's contagious, right? It's so and, awesome. And they're kind of elbowing each other for attention. You're like, I'm next, bring it up here. And they're all there. They got their five minutes to show it off. And so yes. Yeah, um, that's awesome. That panel's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, United Inventors Association. We'll have they'll we'll have that again. So everybody go check that out. It is really cool. You have people like Kevin there giving them feedback. Um, I got to moderate a panel and I was using the products and people were thinking I was crazy, but they were loving it. They're like, oh my God, she's sitting in my chair. It's great, right? Yeah. Swiveled, it did all sorts of cool stuff. So all right. So and then and then you mentioned one more, which was a more of an emotional one. And I I love this one too. Can, can please tell everybody about that one. It was so great. Yeah. So Homes for Our Troops was there. Uh, it's an organization that provides um, housing for wounded veterans uh, and it's critical housing. Um, so it's adaptive housing. It's for folks with handicaps, uh, whether they've lost limbs, if they're in wheelchairs, if they're uh, you know impaired in any way. And it's something that we've been working with on this old house for many years. And so it's, it's near and dear to our oh, that's heart great. We've with them. We've done shows with them, but when you guys had me out there last year, um, you gave me access to Chris Aguilera, um, who was a master sergeant in the air force. And he received one of these homes for our troops houses. And it was, I know the story because I've yeah. heard it before, but to hear it and to sit next to this gentleman, who was, I'm going to get some of the terminology wrong, but he was basically a medic in an army helicopter, which went down and almost all of the crew lost their lives. And he was severely injured. Um, and he came back with a lot of injuries, including missing um, a leg. And to hear him express how important it was for Homes for Our Troops to build him and his family a home that freed him up to be, as he said, 
you know, a fully functioning father and member of his family um, is just one of the most. Uh, right. So touching. I yeah. saw that interview. You did such a nice job, by the way, with that. And, and I just, I, mean, asked, I just asked him for a story. I mean, he uh, was the guy who was doing a great job. But I love it. You let him, you let him talk and it was so impactful. You know, it's, it is an art interviewing people's an art too, because you have to let them go. And he really, really was such, I love, I do love, you know, obviously it's, I like shows that are, what are we there to do? We're there to see cool products. We're there to make connections, right? Whether it's a, a big box, a Home Depot, an Ace, a Lowe's, a True Value, a Wayfair, on and on and on whether you're a vendor to show your product. I love that kind of that other element of giving back in there too. So I was really happy when you were able to shine a spotlight on that. And then of course, I men mention it again here. I do love sustainability factors as well too. And I know NHS does a ton of things with the actual trade show itself, you know, the space itself in terms of lighting and recycling and all sorts of stuff like that too, which are, you know, you gotta, you gotta be doing good and feel good at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, that's a, a, a phenomenal organization in its own right, but with regards to the sustainability, it's it's something. Well, you know this from looking at the different products coming. Pretty much all of the stuff coming out, all of the new stuff is addressing this issue about yep. sustainability stuff like that. And it's a great little bit of competition where people are trying to one up each other. They're trying to be more efficient. They're trying to integrate some of these things into their products. And so that's actually one of the things that I look for for the new products. Are they being innovative and solving a problem? Um, yep. They can specifically address with the client or the user of the product, but are they also solving the bigger problem of efficiency and sustainability? I love that. Or out of the whole thing. I love that. And and or are they being sustainably sourced or you know sustainably sourced and made too, right? And it's so great. There's so many. I saw so many backup battery generators there, which I love. <laughs> That's the trend this year. Remember outdoor power equipment. Lithium ion batteries were like the thing. First it was LED bulbs, then it was lithium ion. Now it's these generators that I was, I found Geniverse. I love their products, but I'm like, yes, why not use solar power to power our house? But after, after two days, I was itching to be a prepper. I was just like, oh my gosh, I could finally <laughs> be a prepper and have all my stuff lined up, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, everything's powered behind you by generators. No, I'm just kidding. So, so, um, all right. So in 2003, over 60% of the companies exhibiting at National Hardware Show are new. So what advice would you give these new exhibitors in terms of just getting attention and putting their be best foot forward and presenting um, to someone like myself or you or even a, a Home Depot or a Lowe's merchant um, when, they're, when they're on the show floor there? Well, first of all, I would say it's not just about hardware. I think most people know that, but maybe the new folks don't who are coming. It is about everything that has to do with the home and the yard and the industry. So don't limit your scope of conversation. Don't uh, narrow your focus on who you think is going to be there. It is a big, broad, and diverse audience. And keep that in mind when folks are thinking about who are they going to pitch to, present to, who are they expecting to see there, and who they're gonna grab cards from for follow-up. And then secondly, it's in person. Like that's the most important thing. It is in person. And there is nothing like that handshake, that swap of information that I've seen you twice on the floor, or maybe I'm going to you know, buy you a beer or have you buy me a beer over at the uh, garden later on. Take advantage of the in-person. Get around, network, go to everything you possibly can. We know the shows are exhausting. The travel's exhausting. Go home, exhausted <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> right go home and take a long nap for yeah, three days <laughs> get in front of everybody we had yeah. I, I saw stuff that i was never expecting to see i'll tell you one quick um story we were yeah. we were over in the america the usa made a uh, little uh -huh. pavilion, and just behind me just just by proximity was a guy who had a ladder attachment basically for roofers, gutter cleaning and all this type of stuff. And it was just a small extension to pretty much any type of ladder that was out there that allowed you to safely walk up and off of the ladder onto the roof. Oh, so smart. Problem in our industry is, you know, these yeah. guys up on the roofs that on and off of the ladder. And there it was just sitting right there. And again, you know, I grabbed this stuff. We kept in touch with them. We gave them to the producers. And it was because they were there and he kind of called me over and said, hey, you got a second? So that sort of in-person contact, it can't be matched. It's serendipitous. 
things are going to happen if you put yourself out there. So 100%. Your and, and isn't it, you put it so perfectly because you kind of know your audience, obviously a Wayfair is going to be a little bit different than a, than a true value, right? So kind of know who you're talking about. Cause to your point, there's paint products, there's cooking products, there's outdoor living products. There's all, I mean, plumbings. I've saw great at uh, the drain weasel, the little like thing that gets all the the hair out of the drain. I mean, there's so many amazing things that I saw as well. Don't you think too, I think, I think brevity is, is also really good for somebody busy like yourself, like have your, have your longer pitch for people that want to dig in, but have yeah. your like two minute elevator pitch yeah. to your point. You want the in-person, but like, Hey, I invented this amazing root quencher. For example, it's going to solve your user's problem because no more broken sprinkler heads put in blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like quick, Quick, I think is good because you we got a lot of floor to cover, don't you think? Listen, I have the I have the benefit and the burden of being recognized. So people come up and grab me, and I'm also on a tight schedule, as I think yeah. everyone is. It's not just me. So there's many times where I'm just like, great, uh, let's talk, but walk with me. Yeah, um, totally. I love that. that. Point, you, know, you get 90 seconds before I'm going to turn off and go to a different yep. hall, or whatever, and he can or she can't get too far from the booth. But that's all right. Give, you give me the 90 seconds. Walk with me. Let's go. Absolutely. I always tell people have your have your elevator pitch ready. Should you ever get in the elevator with that person you want. And then you, and then have a card, have, have leave behinds. Right. So that's great. I think that's such good. Um, that's such a good piece of advice. So, um, you mentioned this, but on your favorite finds, what are you looking for, for new products? You mentioned some, you mentioned obviously sustainability factor, which is amazing. Anything else that you look for when you look at those favorite finds or look for those favorite finds on stage? A new way to solve an old problem. The problems haven't really changed, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to solve yeah. off of the ladder, the mosquito bite, the I need a more long lasting this or that. But uh, what I'm looking for is the new way to solve those problems. And when it's new, it can't just be different. To me, new means it's going to be more efficient. It's going to be more practical. Yeah. I'm going to get more if I give less in terms of either the cost, the price point, whatever it is. So that's what I'm really looking for is who is coming up with sort of a very good, unique idea to solve an old problem. That is so well put. That is just so perfectly put. So you'll be doing another interview, yay, with Homes for Our Troops on February 1st at 11 a.m. So February 1st, 11 a.m., that those that want to go see Kevin on stage, um, you, you already kind of said why this organization is special to you, but are you looking forward to, to obviously you're looking forward to that interview as well? Uh, you can't help but be impressed by these folks who you meet and hear their stories and you stand next to them. Uh, Tom Silver, our general contractor on the show, he and I are doing an auction call to benefit Homes for Our Troops in about a week or two. Um, there are touch points in my life throughout the year where I actually get the chance to sort of work with Homes for Our Troops. This ends up being the highlight now because we used to be doing shows with them or building houses with them. Um, we do less of that. And so this becomes sort of the in-person. You get to put your hand in hand with the service member who was given so much and you get to tell the story of this great organization so oh it's so great i'm really looking forward to that you will you will definitely see me in the audience for that one so you know what we we cannot let you go without oh. talking about this old house a former finance guy <laughs> right how did you make your way to this old house it's so cool i love that you're a former finance guy by yeah. the way tell I'm us about this evolution as soon as this is over, I got to go back to my Excel spreadsheet here and rerun my mortgage amortization. <laughs> you you can take the guy out of finance. You can never take finance out of the guy, right? <laughs> when, when, when the mortgage broker gets me on the phone, they're terrified because I think it's going to be a <laughs> conversation. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I got to scratch the stitch. Give me 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> The short story is that I grew up watching the show. I was a huge fan of it. You know, my dad was in construction and we used to go to the job site to work and you know, just labor and type stuff, but I, I kind of got the uh, the itch. Um, and so when my wife, Kathleen, and I bought our first house, we bought a fixer upper. We started working on it like everyone did when they were young, uh, realized that there was a million things we didn't know. We wrote the show. The letter turned into them sending a camera out to make an episode of a new show, which was Ask This Old House at the time, 22 years ago, 21 years ago. That's awesome. Uh, and I was psyched. Like, I got to meet Tom Silva. Oh, yeah. He did work at my house, Jim Clark, the painting expert. Off they went. 
I said, hey, guys, can I take a picture on the front porch, you know, crack the beer that night and said, whoa, that was cool. And to my utter amazement, um, and I was dumbfounded by it, but three weeks later, they called me up out of the blue and said, any chance you'll want to host this old house <laughs> and ask this old house too. And I was like, what? What? So, <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. So it just fell in my lap, uh, but I'm very grateful for it. Um, and it's been 20 years now that I've been doing it and I still love it. It's so great too. You're so natural on camera and you're likable, you know, it's like, it's, I, I like people The I mean, I would say, so what would you say is the best part of your job? Because I feel like you sharing it with people is probably one of your answers because you're just so natural at doing so. You know, you might be surprised here. I don't know. The TV part doesn't get me going at yeah. all. That's the part mm -hmm. that I consider the job. When I have a chance to like work, most of the time I'm standing next to a guy or a girl who's working and saying, hey, what are you doing? Every once in a while, I get to put the tool belt on and they're just like, okay, you know, set it up and then just get to work and finish the thing. Those are the days that I enjoy the most because the people who I work next to yeah. are absolutely without question some of the finest trades people out there and so even 20 years later if i'm working next to tommy or jen in the in the yard um if i'm working with richard under a sink like i'm just like in heaven i get the like my mind shirt turns off i'm learning stuff i'm using my hands that is still that's amazing that's, part about it. that's the part the of number it. the numbers are quieted when you have a wrench in your hand which is like you know numbers numbers <laughs> More of a hammer. I'm, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a carpenter type of guy. Richard doesn't like it when I get a wrench because I usually turn it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have experts around you, right? That's why you have the pros. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll leave you with this. What what made you decide to come back to National Hardware Show? I mean, why are you coming back to join us? We're very happy to have you, by the way. <laughs> Well, you invited me, and so I wouldn't turn down the invitation from folks who I really enjoyed being with last year. Um, I was probably going to be there anyway because, you know, as you said, all these other shows are there. That is the week to be in Vegas if you're in this industry. There's no way that this old house cannot be represented at a hardware, kitchen and bath, home show. Um, so I was probably going to be there anyway, and so I get to do it with you guys for a couple of days. That's so amazing. Well, we are elated to have you out there again with us. Um, everyone should go to National Hardware Show's website. You'll see a full schedule for when you can see Kevin. Um, we know that you'll be able to see him in the backyard at 5 p.m. for the happy hour the first night, Kevin, as we said, right? And the award ceremony, 5 p.m. on the second. Uh, I'm sorry, on the first. So the 31st is the happy hour at 5 p.m. And the first at 5 p.m. is the award ceremony, as well as you on the favorite finds. Yep. And, um, and, and getting to see, and, and what did I say? I want to make sure I get it right here. Uh, February 1st at 11 AM with homes for our troops. So Kevin, it is a true delight. We could talk, I know for hours and hours, but we want to be sensitive of everybody's time. Hence, hence our other one, make this pitch a lot shorter next time. Right? No, I'm just teasing, but thank you so much. And we're really looking forward to seeing you out there in a couple of weeks. Nathan, the pleasure is mine. I'll be out there. We'll see you in Vegas. All right. Take care. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.